And now, the top 10 things we've learned about networks. When we decided to close the conference with a video, we realized pretty quickly that the skill set that makes us a good consulting firm and think tank and incubator really isn't the same skill set that's required to make a good video. So we got resourceful and we did the best thing we could think of. We found someone who knows how to make a good top 10 list and we stole from them, tried to make it our own. Here we go, top 10 th things that we've learned about networks. Number 10. At the heart of everything, it's about trust and relationship building. And so funding the opportunity for people to get together, think together, break bread together, get to know each other, um, creates very resilient networks. And it's um, not that hard to do. Exactly. Number nine. One of the things that I'm finding in my work as we create a network among organizations that are working in spaces that overlap is the need to create common agendas around the problem you're trying to solve. And how to do that when everybody's not exactly in the same space, but all focused on the same long-term goal. Um, oh my God. I had no idea. Number eight. There are actually two things. I think that have really amazed me. Uh, the first is how much language is a barrier to understanding uh, what the networks, how networks play into our work life. That so much of that is already there, we just don't have the language to describe it. And the second thing is that we can no longer hold ourselves apart from what is happening in the networks, that to truly be successful uh, in investing in networks, we actually have to be in them. So, so really, there's just two? There's just two. Uh, number seven. Networks aren't these wild, scary things that just go off and do crazy things all the time. And that when you're intentional about building them, about teaching them what works and what doesn't, about providing feedback mechanisms so that people can learn as they go, that's how you control the network. You know, that you, by providing them the maps or the dashboards or the feedback mechanisms that reward what's going on that you think the people in the network care about, that's how they get smarter and sharper in what they do. Number six. I particularly like uh, the frame uh, that Diana uh, Scarce has uh, used of designing for serendipity. And I think as we move forward, the challenge for foundations is to support spaces and processes where we get the right people in the room and we give them time to connect and explore their uncertainty and puzzlement together around the uh, complicated and challenging issues we all face. Top 10 things that we've learned about networks. Number five. Bob Baker said today that Network weaving is the humility and the patience to see the gift in each person in the room and help them understand how they connect that gift to the needs. Number four. Historically, foundations have played a role often as information disseminators, as disseminators of best practices, of great ideas, um, of projects that, that uh, have been done. Um, and so often networks have been thought of as very one way, um, kind of much more of a broadcast dissemination kind of thing. And, and often we think about them from that lens of how do we get our word out. For me, the opportunity, which is so exciting, is to think of networks as two-way or multi-way. And uh, um, uh, it's as much about listening and getting feedback as it is about being able to send stuff out. Um, and so one of the things that uh, we often talk about in staff is to be uh, genuine about wanting feedback. Um, and that's something that uh, sounds obvious uh, on, on one hand, but on the other, sometimes it's not, because I think sometimes people say, well, here it is, I've created this thing, and I guess I'll ask people if they like it. Um, but you really don't want to hear uh, that they don't, uh, or that there's some way to make it better. And hey, that goes for me too.
Number three. The thing that I take away repeatedly every time I encounter a network or try to influence a network is that as a funder, less is more. That the more money you put on the table, the more you intervene, the more you do the work of the network, the harder it is to step back and the more dependent they are on you and the actually the, you actually slow their development. Oh, buddy. Number two. For me, the, the thing that I'd like to say that's most important about what people need to appreciate about networks, um, funders in particular, um, is networks having a value base and the importance of values as the part of what attaches people, connects people, inspires people to stay connected. And the number one thing that we've learned about networks. Matthew Fulton talked about organizations not um, being the, the unit of uh, the right unit of investment anymore. And so the next question is, what is the right unit? Well, I think what would be helpful for people in foundations is to try and take off the hat of funders for a second and to think of themselves as change makers instead. And think about if my goal is to basically empower networks to basically achieve these social missions, how can I best help? And in some cases, it might be funding different units, but in other cases, it might be something completely different.